Muslim clerics acting like pimps. <laughs> Undercover in Baghdad, we expose a secret world of sexual exploitation. <laughs> Widows of war forced to become halal prostitutes. Men of God giving religious guidance on how to abuse children. In this holy sex trade, even children are for sale. حيكون هذا موضوع يختلف يعني حتكون هاي بعدها فريش سعرها يكون غالي تطلب 150 يعني 200 بنات زينات جميلات زينات الواقع I'm in Kaldamia, central Baghdad one of Shia Islam's most important pilgrimage sites. Millions visit this holy shrine, and many couples come here to get married. Just walking around the shopping arcade across from the main shrine, I've come across multiple marriage offices. We've heard that some Shia clerics are performing a controversial religious practice called muta, or pleasure marriage. In this society where sex for unmarried couples is forbidden, a pleasure marriage allows a man to pay for a temporary wife. But they're illegal in Iraq, and we found they're being used to exploit women. And I have to be discreet filming this, but we're here to investigate allegations that some of the clerics here are grooming women for halal prostitution and even acting like pimps. Pleasure marriage, or muta is a Shia practice. But Sunni Islam also recognizes another type of informal marriage, which it calls misyar. Many Iraqi clerics say pleasure marriages are sanctioned by Islamic law and can even be good for couples. This is Faris al-Musawi. Tell me about muta marriage. What are the rules behind muta marriage? <laughs> المنقطع أو لو صح التعبير أو المتعة إحنا نسمونه أكو أكو مهر مقدم وأكو مدة معينة يعني مثل مثل أعقد على زوجة على مهر قدره مثل نقول ألف دينار يعني وعلى مدة قدره مثل شهر واحد. The man pays for a sexual relationship, but the cleric said if the woman was poor, the man would be helping her. إذا كانت عندها أطفال وزوجها ميت يعني يكون يتقرب إلى الله بهذه الأطفال وثانيا حصانة للزوجة على مدة لا تخرج خارج نطاق الشرع. But what's the difference between متعه marriage and prostitution? دائما الزنا ما بيها فد قانون أو أو أمر شرعي يتفقوا زوجة يعطي يعطيها يمارسون الجنس أمر أو أمر شرعي. ومعروف عند المجتمع فهذا حلال مثل حال حال الزواج Fifteen years of war have had a devastating effect on Iraq's women. A million have been widowed and many more are still displaced. Clerics had told us pleasure marriages were a way of helping vulnerable women but we'd started to hear stories of abuse. We're concealing the real names of the women we spoke to. When the so-called Islamic State took her city, Rana fled to Baghdad. Soon after, her husband left her. فصادقت واحد أنا مود أحمي روحي 
راد يزوجني قبلت قال روح للكاظمية أكو هناك يمسكون عقد احكي لي إيش حصل بالضبط لما رحتي لمكتب السيد انطا خمسين ألف سوالي عقد فرحت و... قلت إيه يعني أنا أعرفه يعني هذا الزواج Rana says she trusted her new husband and didn't read the marriage contract. She thought she was starting a new life. عشنا يومين ثلاثة يعني أسعد حياته وجيب أكل ومدللني. تعرفين أنتي مكسورة يجي واحد يحط عندك أمل. أي هاي. After a few days, Rana's husband took her out shopping. Then she says, without any warning, he vanished. اختفى واستمسكاتي كلها يمه. اسال ما حد يعرفه. She thought her husband was sincere. In fact, he tricked her into a temporary pleasure marriage. رحت عندي نسخه ثانيه من العقد. رحت قالوا هذا يسموه زواج متعة. When Rana's family found out the marriage wasn't genuine, they rejected her. Unable to support herself, she became a prostitute. فمن من يقول لك عقد يعني تفرحين تقولين هذا شعروا يا بالأمان هذا زوجي. زوج وهذا مستقبل ويطلع يقول لك كذب. سيد احنا عندنا شيء يعني شيء سيد بس من تكتشفين انه هذا لابس عمامه ولابس هذا وخداع لا A man and a cleric had conspired to deceive Rana. The only way to get evidence on camera of what clerics were doing behind closed doors was to go undercover. First, our reporter had to get his hidden cameras through the Kadamia security cordon. His task would be difficult and dangerous. We're concealing his identity. When I arrived, I was really scared. First checkpoint was really scary because I have the secret camera. If they found this, no way I can run away. Posing as a potential client, he arranged to meet several clerics. I just went for many of this uh, office and start asking them if you do a temporary ledger marriage. Some of them, they said yes. One of them was Sheikh Hussein. This is Hussein Al Musawi. His office is opposite the main shrine. My cover story was I am uh, Iraqi live uh, in London coming to Baghdad for a short trip. Our reporter pretended he'd met a girl and wanted to have sex with her. He asked if the cleric would do a pleasure marriage. The cleric said it was better not to have a written contract. Without a contract, he said, it's easier to cover your tracks. I'm not sure. 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 I'
تلبي من جبت السيد نكتر مع عمد لي دورون حقوق وراك بدون ورقة أفضل لك بدون ورقة أفضل لك the cleric was giving advice on how to use a woman for sex and then get rid of her. We heard uh, evidence they say this, but to see it in, in myself, it was really shocking. I was not believed. Uh, he was told me, have sex with her and then just leave her, like leave her in the street, basically. His services came at a price. لا هسه اريد افتهم اول شيء التكلفه. والله هنا اذا يجون هنا يعرضون بالمكتب يعني فاضيين يكرمون بس يكرمون 150 200 250 هنا هيك يكرمون يعني هم يذبون الناس يا الله ما جاتهم رسول الله. We found an expert on Islamic law, Ghayb Tamimi, who could help us interpret our evidence. In Iraq, he'd been a high ranking Shia cleric. But he started speaking out against the clerical establishment. After receiving death threats, he's now living in exile in London. Oh my God, Samati! I let them for the one who's side of the board. But in the past, I don't want to put the blame on anyone. Ghaith told me this cleric was breaking Islamic law, and his advice could put a woman in danger. If she were caught with a man, she risked being charged with prostitution. لا تملك ما يثبت اي شيء من ادعاءاتها اضمن نفسك من من دون يعني هذا هذا اي مستوى من الوضاعه الاخلاقيه Despite being illegal in Iraq, we found pleasure marriage was widely available in Karthamia. Out of 10 clerics we spoke to, 8 said they performed them. One of them was Sayyid Ra'ad. His title, Sayyid, means he claims descent from the Prophet Muhammad. Our reporter told him he'd met a girl and wanted to have halal sex. He said pleasure marriages allowed a man to do pretty much whatever he wanted. Mm. It's illegal to rent a hotel room in Iraq unless you're properly married. But Sayyid Raad said this was no problem. I wanted to find out about the men who use clerics to do pleasure marriages. I was meeting a married professional in his 40s. Speaking anonymously, Ali, not his real name, told me he regularly does them, sometimes just for an hour. To me, it sounded like prostitution, but Ali said he wanted it to be halal. علم أو مو علم عالم مالتنا أو عن طريق الدين وكذا وكذا يقول لك هذا الشيء حلال. فأنا بالنسبة لي حاج واضح. فبعد ما له علاقة بموضوع الحرام أو بين قوسين إنه ما استنظف يعني الشارع وكذا. 
As we talked, Ali revealed some men were paying clerics for pleasure marriages with children. واحد يجي لي عمر 12 سنة حيكون هذا الموضوع حيختلف يعني حتكون هاي بعدها فريش هم يسموها فريش سعرها حيكون غالي نعم يعني 500 دولار 700 دولار 800 دولار هاي بس للشخص الوسيط يعني للشيخ We were discovering one of Iraq's darkest secrets. Clerics making money helping men who wanted sex with very young girls. Sayyid Raad was prepared to talk about it. Our reporter had told him he'd met a 13-year-old virgin and asked whether a pleasure marriage would be halal. Vaginal sex was forbidden, according to the cleric, but other things he said were permissible. هذا هذا الكلام ما يقول هذا الرجل جريمة يجب أن يعاقب عليها القانون. سيد رعد said he was a follower of Grand Ayatollah Al Sistani, Iraq's most senior Shia cleric. Like some other Shia leaders in Iraq, Ayatollah Al Sistani has in the past written that if a child under nine was promised in a marriage or temporary marriage, sexual touching was religiously permitted. We approached the Ayatollah's office to clarify his religious advice on this matter. In a statement, he said times had changed, and this had been erased from his current books. Ghaith has called for all Iraq's religious leaders to condemn these practices. To continue our investigation, we've come to the most important site for Shia Muslims. This is Karbala. It's the biggest Shia pilgrimage site in the world. Tens of millions of pilgrims come here every year. We'd already seen how clerics were helping men break the law and even doing pleasure marriages with minors. We wanted to know whether the religious authorities in this holy city condoned the practice. I spoke to Sheikh Ahmed Al Asadi. So we've heard about pleasure marriages, muta marriages. Do you do them here? بل ممنوع ويعني يعرض لعقوبات من الثلاث سنوات إلى خمسة عشر سنة يحكم في السجن ما حتى لو كان رجل دين يعني. But in the streets around the shrine. Some clerics were giving very different advice. One of them was Sheikh Salawi. <laughs> Sheikh Salawi said he was a member of one of Iraq's powerful and well-armed Shia militias. 
Our reporter pretended he'd met a young girl who was still a virgin. We showed this footage to Yanar Mohammed, who runs a network of women's shelters across Iraq. Nine years old. They are opening a shop for pedophiles, inviting them from all over the world. The girl is looked at as a piece of merchandise and using the merchandise in specific ways is allowed, but the virginity is kept for that big sale that they will do in the future. The big sale is marriage. Yanar told me that some families see girls as a financial burden and want to marry them off. But parents can only find a husband if their daughter's virginity is guaranteed. Pretending he had a real girl in mind, our reporter asked Sayyid Raad what would happen if he did take the girl's virginity during a pleasure marriage. لا سمح الله وصارت من قدام شو اسوي؟ ما يصير تصير برقبتك تصير هل هي تجي عليك شيء يقول لك تعال خذها زين دخلت وجهها زين دبوها براسه اذا اخذتها مثلا مثلا لا سمح الله وصارت شلون اقدر اخلص من الموضوع؟ لازم الا تروح ما يندلون مكانك لا ما يندلون ما يندلون هو لازم تروح They are speaking of how a man can get away with his crime of raping a young girl. So just leave her and go. What does this mean for the girl involved? If the males of the family are aware of what happened to her, they will be killing her. And then the honor of the male patriarchs of the family is preserved. It's always the girl and the women who are who pay the price. I interviewed a girl who's at grave risk of violence from her relatives. She lost her virginity in a pleasure marriage. We'll call her Muna, and for her safety, we filmed an actor telling her story using Muna's exact words. <laughs> طالبة بالمدرسة وكانك وفد شخص يعني فد شخص يلحقني من المدرسة للبيت وكان عنده إمكانية يعني قوية ومعمل مال سيارات وفد يوم حكى وياي وقال لي يعني أنا أريد زواج A few weeks later, the man took Mona to a cleric in Kavimia. She was only 14. Her parents knew nothing about it. I Did he ask for your parents' consent? No, no. He said, I'm not going to 
ما يحتاج. When she tried to stop seeing the man, he turned to blackmail. قال لي أنا من أخذتك سويت تصوير بشقة صاحبي ف أنا خفت من هذا الشيء. قال لي إذا تحكين وتقولين لأي أحد أشوفهم التصوير. فأنا بقيت خايفة من هذا الموضوع. فكل شيء اللي يقول لي أقول له إي إي إي. منى had been groomed by a sexual predator with the help of a cleric. We wanted to see how difficult it would be to get a cleric to do a pleasure marriage with a very young girl. It turned out to be easy. Sayyid Raad took our reporter to a waiting taxi. Our reporter had told him he wanted to do a pleasure marriage with a 13-year-old virgin. He didn't ask to meet the girl in person or talk to her family. He agreed to do the ceremony over the phone. Basically, another colleague of mine, she was in the hotel and when he rang the phone, my female uh, colleague, she was in our, another round of the phone and she was ready to answer. شيماء أني هسه ويا سيدنا على مود العقد فهسه مر لك التليفون على مود تحكي وياه هسه راح افتح السبيكر الو السلام عليكم شلونك عم شيماء؟ I'm not thinking this marriage will be that simple the only question he asked her what's your name and he start make the ceremony without any question أقول أقول شو ما فقدت على عقد نعم عقد منقطع منقطع يلا افتحوا ديكم صلوا على محمد توافقين يا شيماء محمد أن أكون وكيلك الشرعي ليزوجك من خاطبك الأديب السيد على مهر حاضره 150 ألف دينار ولمدة يوم ما حد فإن كنت راضية فقولي نعم أنت وكيلي على الزواج قول صلوا على محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى زوجتك وانكحتك يا محمد موكلتي شيماء محمد على المهر المعلوم بينكم حاضره 150 الف دينار ولمده يوم واحد فان كنت راضيا فقل نعم قبلت الزواج نعم قبلت الزواج قبلت بك زوجه قبلت بك زوجه يا شيماء محمد يا شيماء محمد ولمده يوم واحد ولمده يوم واحد شيماء قولي لي قبلت الزواج قبلت الزواج قبلت بك قبلت بك زوج قبلت بك زوج يا شيماء محمد يا شيماء محمد صلوا على محمد اللهم صل على محمد هسه بابا صار زوجك هسه مدة يوم ما حيد منقطع هذا انت وياه زين؟ يلا هاي موفقين ان شاء الله رحم الله والديك سيدنا هاي عن الحلال والحرام صار زوجتك حلالك شكرا لك يا سيد In just a few minutes Sayyid Raad had made $200 for a pleasure marriage with a girl he believed to be only 13. For Mona, the consequences of her teenage pleasure marriage have been disastrous. I mean, I mean, I'm scared. I'm not going to die. I mean, what do you mean? I mean, what do you mean? I'm scared. فلا حد يقتلني يوصل لحد اهلي يسمعون يقولون فلهذا السبب يعني انا كلش خايفه. Her family are now pressuring her to get married. She told us something similar had happened to her cousin with fatal results. يعني همين اكو وحده بنت عمي همينا نفس الشيء حبت ونضحك عليها وهمينا ما بدها حيله وجو لها خطابه وقالوا لها يعني ابن عمك لازم الك وينحي عليها وفات عليها ويعني هي مو بنيه تقاليدنا وعشايرنا اللي مو بنيه يفوتون عليها ويقتلوها هم اللي قتلوها ولد عمها الكبار نقتلها ونغسل عارها Mm. 
One is in such an impossible situation. What she thought was her teenage love story has ended up ruining her entire future. And if it wasn't for the cleric convincing her that it's religiously okay, this would have never happened. In Iraq today, conservative Shia clerics give more than just spiritual advice. After years of sectarian conflict, they've gained political leverage, often with the backing of armed militias. Activists say they're pushing women's rights back decades. There were laws that protected women, some protection for us in our marriages. It seems that all the things that we gained in decades of hard work of the generation of our mothers were just lost. Once the Islamic clerics rule, the first loser is the woman. Our findings show that Iraqi law is failing to protect women. To try to understand what's happening, I've come to the courthouse in Sada City. Just outside, I see the clerics I'd met earlier. They're operating a parallel religious legal system, conducting Sharia marriages and divorces. <laughs> Sayyid Faris al Musawi is doing a Sharia divorce. It only takes five minutes. Divorce under Sharia law is easier than under Iraqi civil law and leaves women with fewer rights. Sharia also allows child marriage. What's the youngest age that you'll marry? يعني أن أن تكون بالغة يعني أن تكون أم طفلة أن تكون بالغة أنا قصد شنو البالغة يعني بحيث تطيق شنو تطيق النكاح والزواج أكو مرات عشر سنوات مرات أثنى عشر سنة مرات خمسة عشر سنة بموافقة ولي الأمر. Under Iraqi law, a girl must be 15 to marry, but this doesn't seem to bother some clerics. مش مضطر إنك تتابع القانون؟ ما يأثر عندنا عندنا هاي القوانين الوضعية ما يعتد بها أما إحنا عندنا عندنا القوانين الشرعية السماوية لا إحنا إحنا ثابتة مو أنا أتبع القوانين السماوية أفضل من القوانين الوضعية. Inside the court, they're dealing with the consequences. Iraqi law doesn't recognize Sharia marriages, so to be legal. Couples must have their marriage signed off by a judge. The law on the minimum age for marriage should be enforced, but that's not happening. Hanin is getting her marriage registered. She's dressed like a grown woman, but actually she's only 13 years old. A cleric married Hanin to her husband under Sharia law six months ago. Now she's pregnant. انت تزوجتي من سجاد يا حنين؟ اقاربك ولا اي شخص؟ يعني انت راغبه بالزواج؟ نعم. Because she got married underage, Hanin's father and groom could get two years in prison. Instead, they've been fined $50. It's up to the judge, and these days, many are lenient. والله هو زواج القاصرة أحيانا يكون في مصلحتها وفي مصلحة عائلتها أيضا لأنه يعني هي موافقة على هذا الشيء وراغبة بهذا الشيء وتعرفين الزواج هو سنة الحياة. There's a queue of fathers waiting for their daughters to get married before the judge. Sami Hokaybi is here with his 14-year-old daughter. He didn't want her face shown. Why are you marrying your daughter off so young? 
دورون 14 15 13 بالاعمار هذا ما حد يشتري بالسهر علي The court social worker is registering the teenage brides and their grooms. تبارك ما تقع الزواج أنتي يا مالي ترى بعدش صغيرة أحد قايلش بعدش صغيرة. She's processed 126 underage marriages in the last six weeks. She predicts almost all these teenagers will end up divorcing. If you are a divorced woman, you do not have a future. You are looked at as a tainted person. You become very vulnerable to that cleric who whispers in your ears that he has the solution. They call it temporary marriage, being thrown off from one man to the other, to the third, to the fourth, until you find out that you're a prostitute with a religious cover. Far from pleasure marriage helping women, we'd found that clerics were using it to exploit women, preying on the most vulnerable, recruiting them, and pimping them out. Rasul is 16. For her safety, an actor is speaking her exact words. I want to live in life and life and family. But I didn't open my eyes on life. I didn't open my eyes on this way. I didn't open my eyes on this way. I didn't open my eyes on this way. Rasul was married off at 12 and divorced at 13. Then she did a pleasure marriage to survive. But soon after, the man left her. بعد ما اكو اختفى حاولت اني اوصل له ما قدرت اوصل له ما كان عندي حل بس رجعت واصل ويا السيد اللي عقد لنا The cleric told her that now she would never find a real husband وقال بعد بعد انت مشيتي بهذا الطريق وما عندك حل ليش ما تكملين احسن لك with a sister to support, Rasul says she had little choice but to start working for the cleric. I was going Rasul's been pimped by the cleric for three years, forced to have sex with dozens of men. فالسيدة تكون مسؤوليته يكون اكو علاج حتى اني ما اصير حامل يعني ابر وكم المبلغ الذي بيعطيكي مقابل كل شخص؟ هو حسب رغبة الشخص مو اني احددها يعني في شي بالجنس بيجبروكي عليها؟ اي اكو اكو اشياء لازم يكون اكو اجبار باشياء اني ما اعددها Ali, who does pleasure marriages for sex, says he always pays clerics to find him girls. They are a lot, but I'm going to be on them. 
هين مو معتمد عليه يعني يعني مكفين ذولا مكفين وزايدين طريقة تعرفي على البنات يعني من عن طريق الشيخ او كذا مثلا افوت للمكتب اشوف يم اكو بنات يم قاعدات وكذا او هو يعرض يقول لي هاي صورة قلت له هذا اوكي هو يكتب لي ورقة اريد خمسة وعشرين الف دينار محتاج هنا اقول كذا اوكي اوكي انا انا عرفت هذا الموضوع اريد يعني محتاج يعني هي موضوع جرته يعني انطيه اياه يعني لان هو كصديق يعني يعتقد هو يسوي بزنس مان يعني عمل لا اكثر موضوع الحلال والدين وكذا ما له علاقه به هو بس اما اذا جيت تسالني انت تجي انت تنطي اختك متعه اكيد لا يعني اكيد لا We already had evidence the clerics we'd been secretly filming would perform pleasure marriages. But would they also procure the girls? Our reporter went back to Kaldemia to say a drad's office. <laughs> It was time to ask the crucial question. Would he provide a girl? يعني إن شاء الله إذا شغل الشهر أسبوعين شهر إن شاء الله يضبط شيء على موضوع. من تجي يعني الله كريم سمن تجي حتى ذا همت من حساب ذا الجيل شيء هم جزء آخر صورتها جزء الصورة مالتها تبقى وياها على جيامتك. أنا ما أنسى على بالي الله شاهد. خوش. مزين. خوش. لا يعني تعرف هذا ذاك اليوم أنا تزوجت واحدة 12 سنة هي يتيمة بس أنا بدي أفكر إني يمكن أنا استغليتها أو لا لا هي مرضاتها تصابتها بها لا قدامك مرضاتها مرضاتها وطيتها فلوس هم In Karbala, Sheikh Salawi hadn't seemed to think he was doing anything wrong in arranging pleasure marriages either. أنا قلت لك البناء هاي خطية فقيرة. سأنا الشغلة الوحيدة اللي خايف منها شوية. قلت لك إنه يكون مثلاً نوع من الاستغلال أو شيء. يعني أنت مستغل؟ إيه. لا لا. قلت لك هذا بعد شرعاً. A few days later, our reporter rang the sheikh to ask him if he too would provide girls. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله شلونك شيخنا؟ دكتور شلون حالك؟ مث ممكن أعرف أكثر تفاصيل إذا أريد أتزوج يعني تريد أنت منقطع تزوج منقطع أي منقطع يعني مدة يومين أو ثلاثة أو خمسة شهر هيك يعني أي 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 ما صحيح صحيح هذني زينات هذني ما يطلع عن إلا مثلا بالشغلات الخاصة عشان شلون مثلا نعقدها منقطع أي هاي شغلة تطلب مية وخمسين يعني أميتين هل حد he told our reporter he could offer him a choice of women. Many of the young women pimped out are destitute. They're vulnerable to clerics who distribute charitable donations. Women, for example, the needs. He asks, when will there be assistance from the school? When the school is closed, he will give her a look. The thing is, I have a telephone number. So when we get assistance, we will get the phone number of the boys. ف شافه حلوه وكذا على حسب الاصول يتصل بيها ورا ثلاث ايام او اربع ايام يكون المكتب فارغ غيف تميمي says he's seen clerics luring women into the sex trade تواصل مع الشيخ شيخنا عندنا سؤال ويبدا ياخذ رقمها يبدا يتواصل معاها يبدا يتم الزوجه ما عندش زوج انت ايش باقي ايش تعالي انا اشوف لك شاب متدين ويجرجرها شوية شوية ويتاجر بجسدها بهالطريقة. الآن منظومة هذه منظومة متكاملة. 
Our undercover reporter had been promised girls by Sheikh Salawi. Now he was about to meet him in Baghdad. The Sheikh said he had a girl waiting. He had a male in Gada. He in Gada, what you had it? Huh? مثلا اما يعني البرق المادي او هي محتاجه لعمليه جنسيه وكذا يصير عقد مع الشرعي يعني بس ما اليوم واحد ما كيف The Sheikh said he had arranged a place where our reporter could have sex with her يعني بشون بيوتنا الشيء قارب ما بيح وتجرة الجارة أجرتك مكان أمين ولطيف اوكي. ايه يعني في سبيل الواحد يخلص شغله. اه. We have enough proof he can fight girl. So we left it there. مرة انا اليوم دول هاي البنية وعادة تجي. اه. والله خابرتك كلها رجعي. اوكي. اوكي. ان شاء الله. اوكي السلام. The Sheikh had proved himself willing to break the law and sell women. By now, we had evidence this practice was widespread. I was about to meet a widow whose story revealed a senior cleric running what appeared to be a prostitution ring. Reem's husband was killed in an ISIS bombing. Soon after, she and her two children lost their home. من كثر الفقر والجوع التجأت الإنسان شيخ بمنطقتنا قلت له سيد أنت ساعدني أنت الناس عالم هواية تنطيك للفقراء للأيتام When the cleric contacted Reem a few days later he made a suggestion من رحت لأعرض عليه أنه يزوجني متعة بصراحة وافقت ما ترددت قلت ما يخالف يعني ما رستوا الجنس مع بعض؟ أي نعم غصب Reem says the cleric started selling her to his friends. It began one night when he brought three men. سد الباب صديقة. قلت لا عفية حرام عليك الله ما يقبل. قلت قومي تس الشيخ يقول أنا من زوجها متعة. ثانيات وخلص مارس الجنس وطلع صديقة الثانية بنفس الحالة ثالث واحد هو هم إنسان معروف بالمنطقة كيف كان شعورك؟ ذل وخيبة اختصاب عليني هذا بس جباري بالجنس العنف عندهم اكثر شيء بالجنس العنف We can't identify which cleric Reem alleges abused her but she says that she was raped in one of these offices in Karbala The lucky ones reach to our shelters. The ones that are not lucky. What happens to them? They end up in brothels and they don't live long. I would say their life expectancy is like 35. We saw many who were about to throw themselves off the bridge into the river. We had evidence clerics had ruined women's lives with pleasure marriages. We'd filmed a cleric boasting he had girls for sale. Now, after months of preparation, we were about to try to catch a cleric in the act of pimping. Our undercover reporter set up a meeting with Sayyid Raad. Sayyid, <laughs> 
Once he felt safe, he signaled to a young woman in the back of his taxi. She says she's 26. To protect her, we've disguised her identity. Our reporter makes it clear he's only here to talk. It was a very difficult meeting, but it was important to prove Sayyid Ra'ad he bring girls. Sayyid Ra'ad took charge of negotiations. Sayyid Ra'ad seemed keen to get the deal done as quickly as possible. We had the evidence we needed. It was time to end the meeting. Our reporter took Sayyid Rad aside and said he wouldn't go ahead with the pleasure marriage. But Sayyid Rad wasn't ready to give up on the deal. We'd captured evidence that a cleric was prepared to pimp a young girl. The cleric wanted his $400. He was willing to bring as young as he has to. He just didn't want to let that deal go past him. It's a good franchise for the, these vampires. They suck the life out of young girls and leave them to deal with their miseries. Yeah, <laughs> We wanted to put our allegations to the clerics we'd filmed, but it was too dangerous to do it in person. I phoned Sayyid Raad from London. Hello. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Marhaba, my Sayyid Raad. Raad, I'm Fadli. Hello, I'm Nawal Al Makhafi, and I'm a reporter on the BBC in Arabic in London. هل بتقدم زواجات متعة في مكتبك في القاضمية في بغداد؟ ماكو لا ماكو 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 شيء شيء ماكو بس بس ما عندنا شيء دائم بس دائم فأنت ما بتقوم بالزواجات متعة في الك الرقم هذا ما تميل أقدمون الطاج هذا الرقم غلط ماكو شيء أبوي هل بتعرض غرف فندقية للزواج الذين هي هنگا The other clerics didn't respond. We put our evidence to Iraq's Grand Ayatollah al-Sistani, one of the most senior clerics in Shia Islam. 
In a statement, he said, If these practices are happening in the way you are saying, then we condemn them unreservedly. Temporary marriage is not allowed as a tool to sell sex in a way that belittles the dignity and humanity of women. Also, a guardian of a girl should not permit her marriage without her consent. And she is not supposed to marry if it's against the law, which could bring troubles to her. He said the abuses we'd seen were happening because the authorities were not enforcing the law. An Iraqi government spokesman told BBC Arabic, if women don't go to the police with their complaints against clerics, it's difficult for the authorities to act. But for many young women across Iraq, there's no hope of justice. Muna can never let her family find out about her pleasure marriage, so going to the police seems impossible. Since we spoke to Muna, she's run away from home. Rasul is still working for the cleric. She feels she has no choice. Reem escaped the cleric in Kalvamiya. She is still traumatized.